and welcome to a diamond tipped edition of Ben's Junk. So back in July, I upgraded the archives old Newmark turntable to a direct drive Audio Technica ATLP120. And when I did the Ben's Junk on that, I mentioned that I was kicking around the idea of upgrading the stock cartridge, the AT95E, to the only uh, $9,000 plus cartridge where, at least via the internet, I could hear any kind of appreciable improvement in sound. And that cartridge was the Nagoka MP110H. And of course, my other big demand was that I wanted a cartridge that would be plug and play with my model of turntable, uh, so I wouldn't have to completely reset the turntable. But I put that whole idea on the back burner for a while just to live with the stock cartridge and see how I felt about it after a few months. And for my birthday a couple of months ago, I got $100 in Amazon gift cards, and I figured, oh, what the hell, I'll put that towards the Nagaoka, and that brought my cost down to 50 odd bucks. So if I decided I didn't like it, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But the initial plan after getting the Nagaoka was to keep the old cartridge and to uh, keep the separate 78 stylus that I had bought for it just on there permanently, and that is indeed what's on there. And as such, when I bought the new cartridge, I went all the way and got it with the head shell pre-installed. So it could be as hopefully nice and easy as possible. But of course, nothing in this world is perfect or easy. And I found that the complete Nagaoka setup is a bit different in weight than the old stock cartridge. So I went online to see if they made a 78 stylus for this guy, and they do, and the best price I could find on it was $112, uh, which I thought was just a little steep for a needle. So uh, I guess I'm stuck having to reset the tone arm weight every time I need to tackle 78s. But anyway, what you're going to see now is, if you will, some documentary footage that I've shot and the first leg of it will be of the initial installation and tests. And the second leg was shot about three weeks later. So, yeah, this has been in the pipeline for some time now. And that was after I had accrued the six hours of recommended break in time. And uh, you'll see the associated tests with that. So here we go. All right, let's just go ahead and plug in the new cartridge and we'll see how it lines up and uh, we'll go from there. Seems a little off according to this chart. Let's take a look at the geodisc. way off according to this. Uh, before I do anything else, I think I'm going to just do a little audio test and just see how it sounds. I think it 
looks about right. It seems to agree between my two uh, protractors. Actually, they're a tad off from each other, so it's right in the middle. So let's give it one more go and see what we get, and then we'll take another test sometime in the future once I've broken in the cartridge a little more. Actually, before I begin, I forgot to set the tracking force earlier, so I'm going to do that real quick. Should be still set to 2 grams, but then again, it's a new cartridge, could be a totally different weight. Uh, yeah, I'll just do this before I embarrass myself more. Ah, well, that might explain some of it, wouldn't it? Alright, let's try this again, since I'm a total idiot and I forgot to, you know, set it up from scratch. So I've reset everything, the weight, the whole shebang. Two grams is my norm for when I play records, and that is uh, granted on the upper end of the scale for what's written in the manual. But uh, again, two's my norm, so let's just see if I calibrated this right. I make no guarantees. I haven't tested this yet. Wait till I get zero. Hopefully it's at least within spitting distance. Yeah, real close, super close, 2.02. So I'll fine-tune this just to take care of it. Oh, 203. Uh, I'll fine-tune this just a hair, and then we'll take another go at this. All right, I know I'm being pickier than I need to be, but I just want it to be as good as possible for testing purposes. So yes, we are right at 2 grams, and uh, now let's get to work here. He's your man. See him in action. He's a
Trackability Tests, Level 1. Level 6. All right, I got some final thoughts for you here. For all operative word practical intents and purposes, I think this cartridge outdoes the AT95E on everyday music and such. Uh, case in point, when I was putting together the Christmas episode of Archive a few weeks ago, I took two passes at the Stan and Doug Yust Go Nuts at Christmas album that I covered. Uh, I was working on that episode when this showed up in the mail, and I had already done a pass at it with the stock cartridge, and uh, some of the tracks on that pass had some really bad distortion on the vocals, and I don't mean sibilance. But I decided to take another pass with the new cartridge just to see how it would go, and it came out far mellower, and that was what I used in the final episode. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't save that initial pass for posterity. So much for foresight. But I think that speaks volumes about this cartridge. Um, amusingly, it doesn't handle things like test trackability records very well, at, at least the ones I have. But with standard, everyday, nothing special vinyl, it seems to beat what I had. I wouldn't call it a miracle worker. Uh, you know, a lot of it's only as good as the actual vinyl stock and pressing and mastering and such. But I think it's a solid step up from what I had. And the 1895E isn't a bad cartridge at all, in my opinion. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter. And that's it for today, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.